are going to look at some examples of questions asked in previous exam papers with regards to sex, uh, sex linked disorders. And the first one we'll look at an example of red green color blindness. So study the genotypes and phenotypes below that show how the alleles for color blindness are inherited. X and Y represent sex chromosome. Carriers do not suffer from color blindness but can pass the allele for color blindness onto their children. So as with previous um, monohybrid cross videos that we've done, remember that they would give you the dominant or recessive trait in brackets um, in the question. In this one it's not like that but they do give you all of the information that you need in this table so you just need to be able to draw the information out of that. So looking at uh, the first person, Sarah, her genotype is um, X with an allele of a capital letter B and another capital letter B and then they tell us that this is a female with normal sight. So we can already distinguish from this that B is the dominant trait because it is a capital letter B and then also um, it is for normal sight. Then if we look at beauty, beauty is a carrier female so we can see that B over there is a lowercase b so that would be the recessive allele and that would be for color blindness. How do I know it's for color blindness? Um, they've told us that in the question and then um, later in the table they also mention that. Uh, Leone is a color blind female so there's two lowercase b's and that's the only time that a recessive will be seen is if both of the alleles carry that recessive allele. Paul is a male with normal sight uh, because on the only X chromosome that he has that can carry that allele, it is the dominant trait for normal sight. Sam, unfortunately, is a colorblind male and he has a lowercase b. Let's quickly look at these questions. Is color blindness caused by a dominant or recessive allele? We know the answer there is a recessive allele. How do we know that? From the table and our knowledge that we have acquired while we were studying. Uh, lowercase b is for the recessive and it tells us it is the colorblind uh, trait. Explain why Sam is colorblind even though he carries only one allele for colorblindness. So looking at Sam over here, Sam um, has this makeup over here so his X chromosome the only chromosome that carries these traits um, has is a carrier for the recessive colorblind allele which makes him colorblind if it was a capital letter B Sam would not be colorblind now 2.3.3 use a genetic diagram to determine the possible genotypes and phenotypes of children produced by a female with normal sight. So I would say we would use that crossed with a colorblind male. So obviously a colorblind male, we would look like that. Let's quickly do this cross. So P1 uh, phenotype. What do we have? Uh, female normal sight crossed with uh, a male that is colorblind. Then the genotype, once again it is sex linked so you need to show those chromosomes so a normal fe female would look like that and then the male is colorblind it would look like that. Meiosis in order to get the gametes so just remember to separate them ok 
Okay, then we can go put them in our punnet square. Once again, I use the punnet square. I prefer using this because the chances of getting confused or mixing up um, is very slim because it's a very structured thing. Uh, F1 offspring, uh, let's start with the genotype. Uh, firstly, we need to do the cross. So going down, let's write the dominant allele first. And going across, Okay, uh, let's just quickly read the question and see what they want to know again. Use a genetic diagram to determine the possible genotypes and phenotypes of children produced. Okay, so they don't want, they're not specifically asking for any ratios uh, or any percentages. They just want to know the genotypes and the phenotypes. So there will be two females and both those females will have normal vision but they will be a carrier for that recessive gene of being colorblind and then there'll be two males and these males will both have normal vision so phenotype you can say two females normal vision if you want to be a bit extra, you can just say carriers of, um, oops, the spelling there, of colorblind allele. And then two males, normal vision. So let's just quickly recap what you get marks for. So they specifically asked for the genotypes and the phenotypes. So if you gave that, you would get it, um, a mark most likely for those two individually. Uh, you generally get a mark if you had the correct gametes, if you separated them properly. Um, you would get a mark for genotype and phenotype of the parents you would get a mark if you wrote F1 and P1 and then if you wrote meiosis and fertilization which I did not do so I'm losing a mark um, you would get a mark if you wrote those two learn out of my mistakes so that is a example of a question that was asked in an exam let's look at a hemophilia question that has previously been asked um, so we can get some clarity. Hemophilia is a sex linked disease. Immediately you see XX and XY for female and male. Um, caused by the presence of a recessive allele so they're telling us that that is um, the recessive allele that causes hemophilia. A normal father and a heterozygous mother have children. So if the father is normal, and you can make notes like this on the side of your test with a pencil, so that um, you, as you're reading, you know what you're dealing with. So a normal father, that tells me he will have a capital H and a Y chromosome, and a heterozygous mother. So heterozygous means that they will be different, so she will definitely have a capital H and a lowercase h. Remember, the dominant allele is written first. Represent a genetic cross to determine the possible genotypes and phenotypes of the children of the parents mentioned in question 2.1. So let's quickly do this genetic cross. P1, uh, phenotype. And you can just copy what they've um, said in the question. So normal male crossing with heterozygous 
female. Then the genotype, we've already written that down for ourselves at the top. They need to go through meiosis to produce the gametes. Make that nice and dark so you know that means a cross and it's not one of the chromosomes. And then fertilization. I forgot that in the previous example. Fertilization occurs. So now we can fuse these gametes together and see what the possibilities are. So going down, we write this one. It's the dominant one. Going down, write the Y at the end because we know that that comes second. And then going through that way, that is an X. It looks like a Y. Okay, let's look at our offspring genotype. So there'll be one female that is normal and one female. Well, technically they both are normal, but just so you can see um, the difference, this one will be a carrier and then you'll have one male that is normal and one male that is a carrier. So remember these are all the possibilities that could happen if these um, two parents' gametes fuse. Uh, so phenotype, just to be precise you can say one normal female and one normal female that is a carrier. I'm just going to write this so just carrier. You can be a bit more specific. And then one normal male, that one over there, and then one, um, sorry, this is hemophilia, not color blindness. One male with hemophilia. So there we go. I think I've got one more example that I wanted to show you guys. Okay. So with sex linked disorders or sex linked inheritance, um, they're not always going to ask you about hemophilia or color blindness. In this question from an old exam paper, they used uh, fruit flies and the color of the fruit flies eyes. So male fruit flies have the sex chromosomes XY and the females have XX. In the fruit fly, a gene for eye color is carried on the X chromosome. The allele for red eyes is a capital letter R and that is the dominant allele. For white eyes, it is a lowercase r, so that is the recessive. Now, they say a white-eyed male. Now, in order for the male to be white eye, he has to have a lowercase r, which is the recessive trait, is crossed with a homozygous red-eyed female. Homozygous, homo, means they are the same, so that is what the female would look like. Let's do this cross quickly. So the phenotype, um, white eye male crossed with homozygous red eye female. The genotype, we just write, wrote it down now. meiosis, which will produce our gametes.
and then fertilization can occur. Let's split up those gametes quickly. When it's an X chromosome with a recessive, when I know I'm going to cross it, I just write the X chromosome on the right hand side because I know these are dominant and they're going to be um, added on to this. And then XR, okay. And now they just ask for the F1, why can't I write? F1 offspring. <coughs> What am I doing? F1 genotype. So there are going to be two of those and two of these. Phenotype, what do we see? The features, um, two females with red eyes and two males with red eyes. Remember, even though there's a recessive allele, the dominant one will overshadow it, and that is why they have red eyes. That brings us to the end of this video. I hope that you understand um, sex-linked inheritance a bit better. There are a few more questions with regards to sex-linked inheritance, but we'll do that um, with some class activities.